effort and growth does not go together. When we want to grow here on the spiritual path, we must expect some discomfort. It is important for our soul to experience pain and suffering that we may have given someone else in a previous or even in this lifetime. Whether you believe in reincarnation or not, it doesn't matter. The one thing is very clear is if you live by the golden rule, if we are become loving, love will come back to us. But over time we have acted against this law of life and thus created what we call karma or soul burden. Divinity gave us an opportunity to incarnate for a very short time where there is still something unloving here which needs to be cleared up. We can incarnate together and we can play out our act to purify our soul. We are given continuously the opportunity to return to love, clear our karma. Welcome back to the Inspired Evolution and we have with us again, again, Hans Wilhelm. Hans, welcome back to the show. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you again and speak with you. So I'm really looking forward to some exciting exchange. Oh my God, for those that are tuning in for the second time, like you guys already know what you're in for. The last episode with Hans was nothing short of incredible. For those that are tuning into Hans for the first time, give me two secs. I'll just quickly do the honors, although it's very difficult to encapsulate what Hans brings to the conversation in a bit of a bio. He is the author and the illustrator of 200 books for all different sorts of ages. And he actually makes short videos online. Um, how do I describe them? They're on the spiritual laws of the universe. They cover so much different ground. It's all about spirituality. And I think the thing that I love about them most is how simple they are to digest. Last time we were here, I left Hans with the term that it's uh, snackable, snackable content. <laughs> and he loved that phrase. But it really That's is wonderful. like massive spiritual concepts into these real bite-sized snackable fun size bars um, that you can you can digest in four to five minutes and at the heart of it Hans has been creating those videos for himself ultimately and then shared that on into the world for other people to be able to just share and revel in as well and I think it speaks to just the simplicity and the elegance like one of my favorite quotes is, if you can't explain it to a 10-year-old, you don't really know it. Um, and when I'm listening to Hans's videos and I'm watching them, it's like, I, they're just so digestible. They're just so digestible. So Hans, thank you so much for what you create in the world. And thank you so much for being here with us again. Pleasure. Thank you, Amri. I wanted to dive straight in and we danced around, around a lot of themes in our last conversation um, and for those that are tuning in pardon me if I'm referencing that conversation but the conversation was quite deep so you will find me doing that you know, time and time again in this episode hopefully you can follow along regardless um, but the, the thing in there that I wanted to sort of zoom out on and look at potentially a fundamental cornerstone if it is or if it isn't of how you may be perceiving life what does the school of life mean? What does school of life mean to you? And what is that? The school of life, I would call only our earthly, uh, temporary, little short visit. That's, a, that's the amazing earth school, as I call it in one of my videos. The school of life, I think once we have really passed our education or getting back again to our, the absolute reality, there is no real schooling as such. There is just existing, there is just bliss, there is just co-creating and uh, taking care of creation. That is what, what the spirit beings, which you and I and everybody else has once been, and then we left the spiritual, the absolute reality, and mm -hmm. we have what the Bible calls the fall, and now we are here to return back home again. And for that, we are given <clears throat> a short time here on planet Earth, and I call it a school basically because it mm. is here to purify our soul, to make amends, to heal our, our all the negativity that we have caused in past lifetimes, and also through our sojourn from down from the absolute reality to the temporary reality in which we are right now. Is this an answer you were looking for, or was it too far away? Yeah. Too much no, no. 
No, it's it's perfect. It's exactly what I was hoping that we could sort of understand yeah. and start to pick from because I think it gives us a bit of a cornerstone to then sort of build or a foundation block to sort of build our awareness on what life on here on Earth is about. Um, and so when you're putting it in that terms, we there are lessons to that are that are to be learnt while we're here. Um, and you said negativity to be cleared up, which I think is a um, is an interesting perspective, and we'll dive deeper into that. Where, how do we know what we're here to learn? Is it for us to know what we're here to learn or is it like for us to just go along and learn the lessons as we go? The learning pieces, where do they get installed? How do they get determined? And yeah, how do we lean into that? Whenever we, we are made out of love, so to speak, of unconditional, unlimited, selfless love. This is our true essence. We can also call it light ether. But over time we we have acted against this law of light and thus created what we call karma or soul burden. We have burdened ourselves. And it's to return back to the light, like the prodigal son, we have to undo these burdens. And Mm. it happens in the purification spheres, which are just outside of the absolute uh, reality, but it takes a long, long time there. The reason is that we are surrounded by the law of attraction, by like-minded soul. And when you are surrounded by 100 people who think like you, talk like you, and so on, and you never hear any different viewpoints, it's very difficult to progress and even make different choices. So Mm. divinity gave us an opportunity to incarnate for a very short time, 30,000 days, 800,000 hours, which is nothing, to come here to planet Earth and be born in a physical body, And planet Earth is different because planet Earth allows souls from all different um, vibrations on different levels of consciousness to come together. So when we are living here on planet Earth, your neighbor, your aunt, your uncle, your colleague, they're all different vibrations. There are none of them on the same vibration. They may be politically and religious on the same vibration by the church where you're going to. But basically, everybody has different viewpoints and different ideals. And this is suddenly where we can learn a lot. That's one reason. The other reason is also that we are suddenly coming here together with souls with whom we have to sort out still karma, either from their side or from our side, where there is still something unloving here which needs to be cleared up. And we can't do this really in the purification spheres because that soul may be on a different kind of vibration and we may never meet there. But here on planet Earth, we can incarnate together and we can play out our act to purify our, our soul, basically, and undo by, by undoing uh, the karma, by forgiving, by loving and making amends in a nutshell. It's really, it's really interesting to hear you share that because a part of, well, part of me is not afraid of karma, but a part of me... <clears throat> I guess, understands karma to be something that I'm generating through my human life rather than something that I'm unwinding in my human life, as you put it. And there's a very different awareness perspective between those two perspectives. Um, There's a very different awareness between those two different perspectives. Um, Can you elaborate on that further? Because I think the general mainstream awareness of karma is actually that what is, is the one that I've been harboring up until this point, right? Which is we are accumulating karma as we're alive um, and you're offering life as an opportunity to, well, you're offering. (laughs) (laughs) We we definitely can create more karma if we are selfish. It's basically Mm. that anything when we think, speak, act against the law of love, we basically create a lower vibration, which is karma. And that karma is stored in many places, in our soul, in our physical body, in the genes, as well as in the Akashic records that surrounds the planet Earth. In my, by the way, in my little videos, I usually show very clearly how this works here, uh, the karma of somebody does something bad that it's stored in the Akashic records, and then mm. la- and it is also p- stored in the planets of purification. And here Mm. in the planets, when they move to a certain way and come together or are they full, they download that karma back to us. And that is our daily energies. So whenever we are today, suddenly we get a phone call, upsets us. Suddenly somebody says something bad. Suddenly somebody cuts us off in traffic. Suddenly we feel very low of energy. These are, we call it daily learning blocks, which are coming to to us um, uh, one after the other 
So we don't have to know whatever happened. We are given continuously the opportunity to return to love. And all these situations which we face through our life, some call it fate, if it's a real heavy kind of thing. But the mm. fate is nothing else than karma that we have once uploaded and just comes back to us because now we are ready to face it because now our soul is strong enough and mm. ready. And we, all, everything is set up wonderfully that we can now either make amends, we can ask for forgiveness, we can, purify, we, can clarify, we can clear our karma. So our day from morning to evening uh, uh, consists of building blocks of karma that is coming back to us. Strictly speaking, we are living on a, our whole life is on a rewind. All mm. our karma slowly rewinds and comes back to us so that we are here during that 30,000 days can clear up as much as possible. Right. Is it just me, and I don't, at the risk of sound like a victim, it sounds, it feels difficult, I would say, um, in a capitalistic society to be always operating from love. Now, is that my own limitation? Is that my own perspective? I definitely don't want to damn capitalism. I think it's done some amazing things for human society as it is. But I think also the fundamental tenet of consume, consume, consume um, is very different to love, love, love. Um, yeah, can you speak to that a little bit in terms of your well, awareness? I think uh, capitalism, like wealth, like money, like everything, is neutral. The question is how big is my attachment to it? Mm. I can use a capitalistic way to sell my, my goods, my, the, the roads, or the, the bread which I made today and use and ca get the cash back. This is an absolutely acceptable way. But I can also misuse capitalism. I can also be corrupt and hurt people through capitalism. So capitalism and money and everything is basically neutral. But the way how we use it for selfish or for, for the well-being of all that is up to us and these choices we have in every kind of organization in every kind of system mm. so we're starting to step a little bit and we've mentioned a few things now where the spiritual law of projection comes into play a little bit um even whether it's the models that we have to run our society um or even if it's in our relationships with each other um the spiritual law of projection and the fact that everything is a mirror in this school can you expand on the spiritual law of projection and yeah how everything is an opportunity for us to pick up um a lesson and it's projecting something back to us because you mentioned even the planets are doing this at a time for us to, if we really reflect and look back in yeah the outside world which we don't even know whether it exists quite strictly speaking it's <laughs> i see you I, I see my computer in me but the picture I see is actually transformed through my eyes and it, it's recreated in my head. I don't see the outside world. Nobody sees mm. the outside world. We only see a picture that is recreated in our head somehow. So mm. that's just the one thing which we can ask. But basically the teaching is that here in the, in the uh, three-dimensional temporary world, the outside world is nothing but our mirror. It's a mirage. And if we want to mm. have... Like looking in a mirror, if the pace looks, uh, if we look grim or depressed and so on, if we want to cheer that person up who is nobody else than ourselves, we have to first smile and then the mirror image smiles mm. as well. And, the ply and whenever we see people who are doing anything that gives us emo emotional charge, that mm -hmm. is a mirroring effect. There is something in us that is not yet loved. So, we, as I said, we get the phone call which upsets us, we get a letter which gets an email that gets us, upsets us, anybody, the noise from the neighbor upsets us. Whatever gives us a negative emotional charge is a clear mm. message to our conscious, subconscious and spirit conscious. This is a moment and time to clear it up. There's something in you which is more or less identical. It is a law of projection. I made a video on this one. It sounds incredible um, to say it boldly, but virtually everything that uh, gives us, upsets us in the outside world is in us. And I've struggled with it initially. I said, oh, this can't be true. It's so on. I've got fine. Many ways, so look, somebody, a dear friend of mine was an alcoholic uh, and uh, so I really was annoyed with it because I was always afraid of something accident or drunk. So I said to myself, I can handle alcohol. I'm definitely one, one of the few vices I don't have. Yeah. So why is that so? 
And then, after really going deeply inside, was basically that uh, his alcoholism made him very happy. And just, he was the best friend. Everybody loved him when he was drunk. He's and, uh, <laughs> yeah, he was one of these happy drunks, you know. And uh, I was basically envious. <laughs> I mean, basically, because he was the center of every party. And I, yeah, I was with my German mm. grim kind of attitude. <laughs> that was a very different kind of approach. So I realized... It was just making me uh, aware that I should loosen up as well and not so, so, so and envious. So this, the problem was not in him. The problem was totally in me. It, mm. wasn't even, it wasn't even an issue for him because he was dealing quite nicely with it. It was just in my head. And this applies to everything. Whenever we see somebody, particularly in, in politics, if we see some politician who does awful things, how can he do this or mm. she do this and so on? Ask ourselves, what are they doing exactly what upsets me? And find out three times where I did the very same thing. And if we are mm. really honest, we have done the same thing. We have lied, we have cheated, we have, uh, what other do politicians do? <laughs> we bribe, whatever it is. We have done all yeah. these things in our life. So they are just only an extreme mirror image of ourselves. And so is everybody around us. So it's a great gift to be here on planet Earth and be able mm -hmm. to see all the mirrors around me. It's intimidating on some level <laughs> to think about the mirror being in absolutely everything. And I love that that simple mystic distillation that actually life seems to be happening outside of you, but it's all being processed by your cortex. <laughs> it's, you know, and, you just, and you're looking at it. It's... How do we know the balance between what to take as a sign and a trigger to work on and what is just happening in the background? Or would you say it's all a part of our internal subconscious uh, or our internal process being reflected out in the world? How do you run the, de uh, the, the delineation between, oh yeah, that's, let's just say, that's just someone walking the baby or that is actually, you know, oh, someone walking the baby. Oh, that's right, you know kids are on the way or something like that for someone so yeah like, how do you not make a story the about spiritual everything world tells us that there are no accidents everything is carefully mm. orchestrated by us free our prior our life and we have agreed yeah. to it and then incarnated for us for our nothing happens to us everything happens for us byron katie's famous words mm. um, and so the situation if the situation gives you an emotional charge let's say a negative emotional charge that is not an accident. It may look like an accident, right. totally unsurprised, but it is not. It is this moment at the moment where we have the opportunity to clear it up. The whole life here on earth is self-recognition. We have to recognize of who we are and where our weaknesses are, our tendencies are, and where we are sort of still not acting as much as possible from the level of love. And it's a long way. I'm still, I like to mention at this instant here, Namri, because mm. I don't want anybody to have the impression that I in any way uh, have achieved all these things and I'm talking yeah. here these because these are lessons given to us for 50 years through Gabriele, mm. a woman in Germany whom nobody can, you can't find her on the internet but her books are out and her books are the ones which are the basis of my understanding. I've uh, walked on many different paths before as I've mentioned in my previous interview but for the last 40 years I really stuck to this one because it is the clearest and the most direct path I've ever found Mm -hmm. And the beauty of it, of course, is that you don't have to join anything, you don't have to pay anything. It is a total free one. The path is between you and God and nobody else. So there's no institution and there are no teachers. And that's why mm -hmm. I say that because I'm not a teacher. I'm a student, mm -hmm. as you mentioned earlier as well. I'm a student and I share what I discovered largely out of my own excitement because I also found that what I read and what I tried out works and has changed my life. That is my criterion whether or not it's right. Now, other people may have different experiences, but my mm. experience has been just amazing since I discovered this path so clear, so easy to understand. And if you see my videos and you have done it, then of course, you, it's, uh, it's, it's, God is simp uh, this uh, divine simplicity. And it's a, mm. a simple way. God has no secrets from his children. Only religions do that. Oh, you have to study this and study this, and then we've got to help. No, God is in you, and whatever you need to hear, and ever to do, immediately, directly connect it. The kingdom of God is in us, so everything we need to know is in us. The essence of everything, of everyone, every human being, 
every animal and any plant is in us. So we do have the connection to the outside world, even through this simple kind of fact. How did you come across Gabrielle's work? Oh, I was dragged to an evening by, by a friend of mine. <laughs> And I says, oh, this is interesting. And then they went to over, over back again, and I stuck with it. Because, as I said, I had all these paths before at Edgar Casey, Rudolf Steiner, at the Tour of some Miracles, and so on. But none of them made me stay longer. And because mm. some of them are too difficult, uh, some are, are too complicated, some of them I didn't agree with. And suddenly I found this path where all these things, which I found valuable, came mm. together in a very clear, direct language. There is, no, there is no misinterpretation possible because the words are very straightforward. Why do you think there is... Uh, religion is in place... It's presented as an opportunity for an individual to connect to God. Um, what I'm hearing from you is religion is also inserting itself between the individual and God. Why do you think religion attempts to insert itself between... The individual and God is it to attempt to forge a connection and then man muddles it up uh, yeah your thoughts on yeah well I made a video on this called the religions uh, dilemma basically it says originally uh, all the wise people uh, there were people who could communicate with God directly in all cultures but then someone else took over and to be in charge and so on so these when the priests came when the rabbis come and so on and they the energy and the connection which we everybody had with god suddenly had to go via the priest and via the mm. rabbi and via and everybody else so the institution because it was nothing else than a power play it's mm. not the power was handed from god over to the people who interpreted the word of god so mm -hmm. you could no longer uh, listen to God because you had to ask your priest what happens before birth and what happens after I die and most priests in our Christian mm. church have no idea on that one but um, that's why they put themselves in these are power construction they're money making structures all of them and they are totally uh, masculine and really mm. put down the woman I, uh, I have a video because who runs this world and it shows how purposely the male uh, of the for centuries have taken over and pushed the woman aside and mm -hmm. created an amazing imbalance. And yeah. uh, I understand that some people go to church, find comfort there, company in their loneliness. I'm mm. not knocking it down, but always could I think, know that God is in you and it's not with a priest and it's not with a rabbi or with uh, anybody else who thinks uh, he is the interpreter of God. The... It's an interesting point to reflect on the fact that it's so male-oriented and driven in many instances, Touchwood. Um, there are a few faiths that aren't that way, um, but most of, yeah, there's, well, there's a lot of that. Do you think that's why people are starting to now, as there is a more of a, I would say this awakening that we're a part of now is more feminine in its nature. I'm not sure if you would agree. Maybe you can speak to that if you do, if you don't. Um, and then also, do you think that is why um, spirituality is somewhat being uncoupled from religion once again and people are finding themselves to be spiritual but not necessarily religious yeah because uh, religion very often don't have as I mentioned earlier the Christian religion if you read the Bible and if you go to church Catholic Lutheran or whatever you will find out that they have very vague definition of where we come from and where mm. we are going. They are, they are not clear on that one because they have <laughs> taken out purposely the teaching of reincarnation, which Christ taught, and I have a video on that one. So you take out reincarnation and suddenly you just are not getting the right answers. Spirituality usually includes spir uh, reincarnation and suddenly everything makes sense why your neighbor is rich or poor, why you have got this problem, why the, someone else is sick, somebody else is healthy. Everything is suddenly explained through reincarnation. But you don't find this in the Christian teaching, in the Muslim teaching, and in many of the Jewish teaching either. There, of course, there are some, of course, uh, that uh, the Jewish beliefs, uh, Hebrew beliefs, include reincarnation. But most of them, the, pop the more popular ones, don't. So therefore, many people are lost with these important answers. Why am I here? What I have to do and where I'm going? And mm. many spiritual paths give a better answer to that. Why do we keep reincarnating? Um, if we've got the like, what is the ultimate? What how, is the ultimate intention to stop reincarnating? Um, yeah. So that yeah, okay, cool. That was an interesting insight. Um, and so, 
then why do we keep doing it? <laughs> if that's the ultimate intention. Yeah, it's true at the beginning when you said, well, I make the decision, some are good or some are bad. When we really um, create new karma, negative karma, then we, of mm. course, uh, do not use this time productively and can become more burdened than we were prior our lives. So right. each time we reload ourselves with, negative, with selfishness, all unloving thoughts, words and actions, and that, of course, has an effect. Now, the idea is not to reincarnate over and over again. The real idea is only maybe once, maybe twice. But many of us, a hundred times, a thousand times we have been here. Some mm -hmm. souls are so attached to the human life that they intentionally come and incarnate again. But the idea is also here for, we have to be aware that because of the earth changes, which are now coming at uh, more and more, the world will be have very difficult times. Um, mm. Many souls realize that this is an amazing time of purification of their soul, because we don't we we do need these intense lessons to purify our soul. So they try right. to incarnate. That's why we have this incredible increase on population number. I've got a video on that one. Why the increase of population? We were 1.5 billion at the beginning of last century, and now suddenly we are on 8 billion inhabitants. Yeah. The reason is because. All these souls realize this is a very unique time. I want to be here when the earth is going into another dimension. Right. So there's an incredible opportunity at this particular point in time is what you're saying for us yeah. to purify our karma specifically um, and also like hence purify our soul. Is that, have I, sent, have I gathered Absolutely. it correctly? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because here is the opportunity to come together with all these souls with whom I still have karmic connections. I can't, as I said mm. earlier, do that in the, spirit, in the purification sphere. So this is a unique opportunity. And everybody who is here has agreed mm. to it. Now, a lot of people don't want their life. They want to end their life. But everybody has uh, made a decision to incarnate. Nobody is forced here against their will to come here to planet Earth. And prior our arrival, we are shown more or less what we made, might expect, what karmic lessons we might have to learn, loving, mm. giving, overcoming things. So we know there will be difficult, challenging times prior mm. our birth, and we have agreed to it. And right now we are here, but the veil of forgetfulness doesn't allow us to remember these promises and these insights, mm. and neither will we remember our previous lifetimes. That is just a, uh, the law of grace in action, because if we would remember our past lifetimes and all the horrible stuff we have done there, we couldn't act today. We would be so intimidated by our own wrongdoing. But therefore, it's a blessing that we don't remember all our negative things we have done in the past. Oh, because that was going to be one of my questions today, was about remembrance. Because a lot of your work is, uh, yeah, it, it invites us to remember um, who we are and where we come from. And I love that you've distilled that actually, you know, there's, it's intentional that you don't remember so much because then you can actually take action, execute. But doesn't therein lie some... Or is that part of the school and the and the education process and potentially the purity or the purifying of the soul? Because if you don't know that you're being tested for a large part of your life until you start to come into spiritual awareness and then you start to live a more, I don't want to, maybe pious life or more aligned or a life built more around love, let's call it that. Um, yeah, does it really demonstrate your true intentions and thence you can be... I don't know, assessed, assessed is a weird word, um, on that. Do you get where I'm going with my line of questioning or am I completely I off the mark I here? I mean, when we, everybody comes from a culture where there is one major law, it's mm. the golden rule, do unto others as you want them to do unto you and do not unto others what you don't want them to do to you. That golden rule is in every culture. Everybody grows up. That is basically our, our, our um, how to survive kind of rule here mm. on earth. And we all know that. And we also know that it works. We have had enough opportunities to find that out for ourselves. So mm. we can waste our time, become very egoistic and selfish and ignore that rule and hurt everybody because we only live once. So I get the biggest piece of the pie and that's mm. okay. But we will learn from that eventually. And everybody will learn in their own time and everybody will return back to the absolute reality whenever they are ready. So there is no real pushing uh, because everybody has their own timetable and everybody has their own lessons. Some people must make many more mistakes before they turn around. It's the same story with an alcoholic. I mean, you can, if I'm drinks too much, you can say, look, stop it, it's not good. But sometimes the person has to go really rock bottom before mm. he says, 
no longer. And now I turn around and will no longer drink. So the, uh, hitting rock bottom may be important for some sorts. It may happen in this lifetime and next lifetime. But eventually there will be the turnaround. Eventually the prodigal son will remember to come home and will be embraced by the father when he returns home. There's a massive frequency around, well, a massive link to Christ consciousness and forgiveness and mercy. And as you're talking about the opportunity that is, you know, the population growth and the amount of souls that are here now, is that somewhat connected to, are those two things somewhat connected? Um, because there is such a predominance of the Christian faith, faith on the planet at the moment. Um, and you said it's an opportunity for souls to be purified while they're here. Um, and that's why so many souls are enlisting to be here. Does that have something to do with um, the mercy and the, and the forgiveness that Christ affords us? Well, everything is mercy. Just the fact that you and I could incarnate here on planet Earth is mercy. The fact that if we repent our wrongdoing, um, are forgiven, our soul, our karma is taken away, mm. and we make amends and no longer do the negativity, Everything is based on mercy and love. I mean, the whole existence is mercy and love. Um, but we may not see it that way because mm. we focus too much on the negativity. But the negativity is our challenge. Like in the school of, of life, that is when, when you go to a college, to an Ivy League college, they are very tough, very difficult. But the mm -hmm. more difficult and tougher they are, the more we grow. So comfort and growth does not go together. When we want to grow here on the spiritual path, we must expect some discomfort. It is important for our soul to experience the pain and suffering that we may have given someone else in a previous or even in this lifetime. It only comes back to us. Everything comes back to us. <clears throat> Did it answer Another your question? I'm sure whether yeah, I'm it does, sure. it does, it does. I'm trying to I'm trying to think about how to weave in the next question whilst okay. trying to keep it concise. The the golden rule you mentioned a little bit earlier um, that do unto others as we do unto ourselves opened up this whole um, question around. There are some people that are perceivedly going belligerently against that. Um, there are some rulers, dictators that do not seem to have everyone's best interests at heart. They're on their own spiritual journey, then, is what I'm hearing from you. Um, but uh, are they aware, before they come in, the amount of karma that they're going to induce because of that? And are they, is some part of their soul actually okay taking that on? Like, yeah, that seems really hard to reconcile for the average person. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say they, they do create a negative karma. They may be aware of it or not prior to the incarnation. I don't know. But the, uh, there are two things important for us to realize. Firstly is whatever a person like Hitler, Mussolini, or any other of these extreme guys did, mm. in their view, they were doing the right thing. Now, not in the spiritual sense, not, the, mm. not in the love sense, not on the growth of the planet, but in their view, they were convinced that going this way was exactly the right thing. So everybody who does something negative thinks they are doing the right thing. Mm. And that's very difficult, of course, for that soul to realize, well, this probably was against the law of love. It was not for the well-being of everybody else. So they sometimes have to come back and experience the pain themselves on their body. I think that's very important to realize when we see somebody who does awful stuff, in their perspective, they're doing the right thing. They may mm. do it just for themselves, for power hungry, whatever, but, or they have a political agenda, uh, whatever it may be. But they, in, and this applies also to everybody else around us. Every brother, every sister, every colleague, and so on. At that moment, everybody is doing the best they can. Mm. And this also applies to ourselves. When we, for instance, five years ago, hit our brother and sister, or do something awful, we, at that time, did the best we could, because at that time we didn't have the spiritual awareness that our negative action uh, would have such consequences. We all do our best at any given time, because uh, we may be weak, we may be tempted, whatever the reason is, but we all do our best. And when we understand that, then it's also much easier to forgive ourselves, not mm. to do it again, but to understand, I simply wasn't stronger enough. I simply didn't see that uh, the connection here. I didn't see the overall you. I didn't know what, how it affected other people. Um, because we grow. 
the mistakes we did in the mm. past, like slavery and so on, are no longer at the moment of interest in our society here. So slavery at one time here in America was an absolutely accepted thing. Everybody did it. Everybody thought it was okay. Most people I should say there are exceptions. The slaves surely didn't think so. But white mm. people thought that was okay because the Bible said very clearly that all the uh, fathers of the Bible had slaves. So therefore we can have slaves as well. They justified it very clearly, the same way as South Africa justified the apartheid because of this, uh, the Bible. So they mm. definitely thought they were doing the right thing at that time. Later on, when they grew and when they matured and when society matured, we realized mm. this was not a good thing. So our intention doesn't necessarily absolve us of our karma because as we're, or does it, because as we're, as we're kids and we, you know, hit each other, um, our intention, it's the best we know and what we, it's the best we know. Uh, we're doing the best we can with what we know is what we've just gathered. Um, and yet, if we are doing the best we can with what we know, um, we do run the slippery risk of not being, not necessarily operating from love still, and that can still accumulate negative karma. And I, the reason I ask that question is because I think a lot of people feel, well, if my intentions are good, then God knows, and therefore, you know, my karmic slate is somewhat clean. Um, but if your actions don't necessarily reconcile with love or mercy, is that kind of what I'm gathering? That potentially you are still accumulating karma despite your intentions? Yeah, the intentions can be totally egoistic. I mm. want to have something, I want to have more money than you. That is my egoistic intention. So if, it's a, if it comes from the ego, that intention surely is not helpful. But if our attention comes from our higher being and so on, then it's, surely it's a very different kind of reaction. The intention of everything of what we do is probably the most important point. Right. Uh, if you go and so kill somebody uh, in, mm. in, in war, if somebody tells you you have to do that, you don't want to do it, but you are a soldier and you have no option, so you kill somebody, that's very different than you go home and sort of poison your grandmother uh, consciously. So uh, there, is, there is a difference. The intention is the point which we're, where everything decides on. But our intention can also be very selfish, yeah. We have to mm. see that it comes from love for the well-being of all, from our selfless love should be our attention, intention be. But we right. haven't been there from the beginning, years ago. We all have done major mistakes. So it's, mm. that's, I, I believe, instead of running around too guilty and so on, I'm no good, no good, no good, just let's face it, this is where I was. Right now, I have got the strength and understanding that this is not good. And I ask for forgiveness from those who have hurt. I try to make amends to where I can, and of course mm. I repent these mistakes. The repentance is very important in this process of self-recognition because mm. it's an energy, and that energy goes into our body. When we repent that we have hurt somebody and understand it, and we take on this hurt that we have given someone else, this is loaded in our soul. And this is also eventually helps us in a re new reincarnation, um, it becomes a memory, it says, don't do this again. You have done it previously, and suddenly we were no longer doing it. So the repenting is a very helpful tool for later acting no longer against the law of love. Mm, the repentance allows you to almost encode it into your, into your felt sense, into your DNA, into your body, so that you have that felt sense awareness to not act out in that way again, which is, yeah, supportive. Mm. Deep, deep repentance, yeah, remorse, yeah. The idea that um, there are moments throughout our day where things are popping in and there's signs from the universe that we're on the right path or on the wrong path. Synchronicities, Hans, where do they come from? What are they about? Your awareness on synchronicities. Uh, I haven't given it much thought and I don't want to waffle here. <laughs> I, I want yeah. to, now, I will say that everything is carefully orchestrated, and even if we suddenly have these inside sources, it's, oh, I've done this before, and then suddenly mm. I got this offer of money, and I do, do need money to pay somewhere. Yes, there's synchronicity that can help us and can guide us through. Mm -hmm. um, it probably depends on each case, but I think I leave it there. Synchronicity is like everything else. There is no coincidence. It's not an accident. If there is synchronicity mm. in our life and we discovered it, it has a purpose. So I can only say that. And you mentioned the fall 
um, a few times in your videos. I've obviously watched you the fall, but you've done a few interviews where you've mentioned the fall, but not um, described it. I imagine it's a little bit to explain and maybe difficult without uh, visual aids. But could you try for those that are listening in, what is the fall that you refer to? Um, yeah, what is the fall? At the beginning of creation, um that we were all spirit, perfect spirit being in the image of God, so to speak. Um, and which is basically also living by the will of God, which is love, loving being. And that was part of the ever extending infinity or creation of God. So we were sort of um, spirit beings who helped in the uh, taking care of service, the lower life forms and trying to also to uh, help in every way to make this whole creation more lovable or nicer. This was our natural being. It's the will of Lord. But there were some souls, and it is a little, it's a um, story. That of course, we, we, we speak about Satana, who later became Satan, who just for, for some reason, which I don't want to go in here because it's, it's a story. You can see it on my video about the fall, mm. and who then thought, no, I want to create my own creation. I want to be not, I want to uh, be omnipresent like God is omnipresent and therefore I need omnipresent. And she had a lot of followers mm. and there are mere billions of billions of souls and she left the original absolute reality to create her own creation. And to do that, the deal was to undo God's creation and then out of when it was all to the lowest uh, substance, then create a new creation. And I say this because we here on the temporary reality have a lot of destruction and everything we see destruction whether we look at the picture of Ukraine and so on these are all negative mm. forces created a destruction there is no destruction in the absolute reality there's only in slow uh, evolving but not a destruction like we have here we have here the it's a world of contrast the world of time and space and the world of cause and effect that is here the temporary reality so we see a lot of destruction and the destruction is often initiated by negative forces, which are souls which have fallen so low that they need the energy from us and other negativity, we call it loose energy, to, to live, to substitute, to have a sustenance. So all these destructive things which happen on our planet are actually very often initiated, are guided and forced by negative forces, which are souls from the astral worlds. It's a mm. very complicated, it's a very big picture which I'm drawing there. And yeah, I, no, it's, I'm you've done it. I've, I've got videos on virtually all of these subjects, if you look mm. at them, and they are going, when I illustrate it, when you see them visually, they make more sense. Mm. But uh, whether you believe in reincarnation or not, it doesn't matter. The one thing is very clear is if you live by the golden rule, if we are become loving, love will come back to us. I think it's very mm. awesome. We speak about positive karma some people mm -hmm. call it positive karma if we could good thing mm -hmm. i do not see positive karma the moment i'm doing something loving i'm honest and truth to myself and if i because i am basically love so basically i'm radiating who i truly am and that of course like attracts like brings other positive stuff back into my life so i do not believe in positive karma i believe when i do something loving mm. or think loving or act loving or speak loving then I raise my vibration to a much different kind of vibration and then on the same frequency, like attracts like, um, uh, law of attraction, it, uh, the things which I need or have to see or hear come to me. You've also referenced in some of your videos that there are positive beings that are here to support us, allies, um, guides that we're connected to. Um, oh, I want to say most of us, that's a massive assumption, Amrit. Um, but most of us may not know how to connect or even know that these guides um, are around. Can you describe um, these beings, these guides, and potentially how we may be able to connect with them? Or are we always connected? Yeah, please. Um, questions for you. Yeah, it is my understanding that we all have a guardian spirit, at least one, some of two. Um, who are usually with us most of the time. Mm. Uh, they're directly connected to us. And whenever we are in a situation where we need this help or guidance, they're immediately there to guide us through our intuition, through our solar plexus, through feelings, guiding. So just don't do this, don't go there, or do this, etc. So very mm. subtle. We have to really be very careful. They do not speak 
with words to us, but they do speak with vibrations. In my video, Spirit Guardian Spirits, uh, you can see how this works. So we all have this inner guidance or somebody who is by our side who helps us in difficult situations. They are not telling us what to do. They only say, this is not good, this is not really why you came to this planet Earth, I would not do this. Uh, but it's, up to, it's your choice. They all, nobody has the right to interfere with anybody's free will. Neither do these angelic beings. They cannot do this. God does not interfere with our free will. Um, mm. And so neither do the angels. So that is, of course, our guardian spirit. Then, of course, there are other angelic beings in, in many forms. The most importantly for me is Christ, who is also present in us, because, as I said earlier, the kingdom of God is in us. And then there is also the God energy in, in, in us as well. So I personally would rather connect with Christ or God. I go right to the top always. <laughs> Why go to someone mm. else when you can communicate with the top? Um, and uh, whatever bothers me, I can discuss it with them and uh, find the answer, which I usually then come very calmly in a way that I, uh, yeah, that I can act up upon it. So we are never ever alone. This is, I think, the mm. key element. So loneliness is unfortunately everywhere, the, probably the biggest problem of people, but we are never alone. Mm. Unfortunately, the, the, the spirit guides can't do much uh, to really shake us awake and say, look, mm. this is, life does that. When we have a blow of fate sometimes, and boom, well, suddenly we lose our job, our partner, we get very sick. That's a wake-up call. That, mm. they do. that is self-created from our karma coming back to us. That does not come from our guardian spirit. But the guardian spirit is there in case there is an accident, a car coming too close to us, and it's not our time to leave. They can sometimes intervene here because our life is not supposed to uh, end at this moment. And they also can guide us to, uh, like with, with the inspiration uh, uh, in which we do get, the feelings, the sensation that mm. we get in certain situations. Um, <laughs> in and around all of that you shared about the school of, um, yeah, the life school today, how much of it is then preordained? The lessons that we come, we kind of know that we're coming to sign up for all of this, and we've got allies and we've got potential distractions along the way, but they're all informing us about our path um, and here to enrich us fundamentally and help us our soul on its journey and hopefully we're clearing karma rather than accumulating more um, but how much of um, I guess the question is your awareness of how much of it is fate and how much of it is free will mm. it's both it, it, it's both and it's done totally by us everything that happens uh, to us, for us is created by us, as I said earlier it's karma coming back to us that is our free, uh, the karma we have created out of free will misused the free will against love and it eventually comes back to us so the situation I find myself in is totally self-created I am mm. never a victim which is very difficult for people to believe and anybody who questions that may want to watch my video that we are no, about victimhood we are mm. never really a victim now it looks like a victim you understand if a person uh, is beaten by someone else and our but it, it's important for us to say not to judge the situation from victimhood our Interaction to, when we see somebody having being misused, uh, abused by another person is, is pure love, help, and assistance if we can in whatever fashion. We are not here to judge in any form. Mm. But the situation is no a coincident. It is sometimes a turnaround of actors. Somebody mm. who has hurt the other person that suddenly turns around. There are many reasons why suddenly a person finds himself or herself in a what we call victimized kind of position. But in mm. truth, the victim does not. It can also be, which is also interesting, that a soul purposely incarnates in a very difficult environment so it can, so it can learn and grow certain qualities like compassion, like understanding. Mm. By being forced by a negative people, I can develop things which I cannot develop when I'm totally surrounded by loving and uh, loving souls. So we sometimes put ourselves into difficult situations so that we can become more compassionate and more loving. But in no case is there ever a, a victimhood. That does not mean to stop it or to remove ourselves from the situation when we are so and, and to find any form of healing and any to stop it. But it is a very different thing. We cannot run around uh, and sit on our self-pity potty all the time because it is 
self-pity is one of the biggest uh, destructive mm. forces we can do on ourselves. We can run, we can get ourselves totally spiral ourselves down into a very negative, poor me kind of attitude. And it's tough to get out of that one. Mm. It's uh, almost like a, a trap and... Uh yeah, like you said, very difficult to get out of it once it's all, it's yeah. almost like the energy of it feeds itself. Um, yeah. I've noticed. Yeah. 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 For those that potentially are stuck there, I often lean in on gratitude as a bit of a, an antidote. And I know in our last episode, we talked a little bit, of, oh, quite a bit about this, but yeah. Um, is that your favorite antidote for victimhood as well? Or what would you suggest? Gratitude is the, the best and easiest tool for everything. We're not the victim of everything. I mean, the moment I feel a little bit lousy, a little bit low, it doesn't have to be a victim. What it says, thank God I do have uh, a computer. Thank God I do have a share. And mm. thank God whatever, I have a partner, whatever. All the, what, all the things we can count suddenly of all the things, because there are a million people who have nothing. Think about the, the migrants who have got millions of migrants are walking around this planet. They have absolutely nothing. And mm. here I've sit around total abundance <laughs> and uh, I, I, I must give it credit and appreciate it. And I must learn to, the moment we put ourselves into a grateful state of mind, everything mm. shifts in our vibration. And that's why you are right. When we are in self-pity, if we find five points here, why we should be grateful for it, or as Byron Katie would say, find five points why the situation you are in right now actually serves you. Mm -hmm. This is very difficult. Virtually everything serves us in a way. Every situation is there to serve us. And when we see that, not from a victim mind, but for somebody who has been given an amazing opportunity to grow, it may be a different kind of attitude we can create in ourselves and to solve the situation. Yeah, I find it's such an incredible gift. I created a little meditation on YouTube for gratitude and it's you know, three things you're grateful for about your day, three things you're grateful for about your work, three things you're grateful for about yourself, and three people. Because I remember the last time we discussed this, you said, be grateful for the people around you. It's really, really a unique gift. And so created that meditation. It goes for like seven minutes, but you walk in and you walk out completely different people. <laughs> I find every single time. It's like someone else comes to sit on the yoga mat and someone else leaves the mat. It's just like, it's just a completely different person every time. Um, oh, Hans, I want to extend my gratitude to you, but before I do that, um, for those that want to feel into more around what you're saying, I will put a link to each of the videos that are brought up in chronological order into the show notes below because we have pulled at the threads of things, but there's a whole videos that you've created, which again, snackable wisdom, like, you know, super insightful yet super digestible. Um, and for those that are curious to check out more around Hans, those videos are in the show notes below if you're listening to this now. Um, what's the best way for people to explore more? Would you recommend them checking out the YouTube channel? Is that the... Is to, that to, to take me on what? I didn't hear it. To, to, to find out more about you. If they're enjoying this conversation, how oh, would I'm you invite important. people? <laughs> I'm not important. <laughs> no, no. But if they want to, they're welcome to go to my website, or lifeexplain.com, or, or my video channel under Hans Wilhelm, where all these videos are. And they're all for free. There's nothing yeah. to join ever. And or you also go to the publisher. In the, on my website, lifeexplained.com, I have, a, I have a, a special page on book recommendations. These are all the books oh. I use for my videos. So you go on the book recommendation page and you see all the books which I've used, which are not my book. These mm. are books by Gabriela. And if you're interested, you click on it and you can read up whether this is right for you or not. So it's all there. It's all available. I just offer these opportunities for people to explore it themselves. And it's all there. It's, uh, and, and I'm happy to share that. And Anybody who has got any questions can send an email to me on my website as well. So I can, I usually when I've got the time, I answer it. Mm. And uh, that's it. But the answers we are looking for are all in us. And this is what the path mm. is. It teaches us to rely on our inner guidance. Hans, thank you so much again for continuously thank helping you, us Amit. remember was... and bringing us back to our inner guidance again and again and again. It is... Uh, like every time I have these conversations with you, I'm reminded that the human experience is like a two-sided coin and that most of the time we spend looking at one side of the coin and then there is a whole other reality that's completely happening at the same time. There's a whole spiritual dimension, mystical dimension that is in effect and is actually, you know, a big part of um, 
yeah, the light, I would say, in some ways, you know, and we're sort of kept in the dark and we're kept in the dark for reasons that you've shared here today and, you know, it's for a positive reason as well, ultimately, um, or for a reason, ultimately. And, uh, yeah, it's just the clarity that I leave our conversations with is is profound. So I just, yeah, thank you so much, Hans. <laughs> thank you, Amrit, and thank you for your wonderful questions and best wishes to all your listeners. And thank the only way, love is the only way forward. <laughs> Inspired Evolution Tribe and audience, you have listened all the way through to the end of another episode. Look at how inspired you are to evolve. Wow. It is super humbling to receive your presence in this way. And on behalf of Hans and myself, we are wishing you all the best, always. And yeah, just it is our honor to be walking you by your side home. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to its end. Obviously, you absolutely love this podcast, and I want to thank you so much for watching this all the way through. Here is another video that's perfectly curated just for you to watch as the next best video to keep your inspiration flowing, to keep you evolving, to keep you... Check it out 